and let us all that we can to build a better future. So comedian Dave Smith, who is uh, a libertarian, uh, spoke and had a debate on Zero Hedge with conservative journalist, journalist uh, Laura Loomer. So this was a two-hour live stream, and I encourage all of you to please check out the full video in its entirety. But I want to just pull out some highlights, and I want to give acknowledgement to Zero Hedge as well as a few other individual um, Twitter accounts that actually uh, put some of the clips up on social media. But we need we need to talk about this conflict that's happening in Gaza because as the bombings continue, the death toll is – is absolutely barbar barbaric. I'm still shocked by the amount of lives that are continually being lost. I always assumed that our politicians were spineless, soulless individuals. I just, I, I just didn't expect them to continue to fall further and further into the depths of depravity and being inhumane. I, I mean, I've always said on the show that our politicians are heartless. I just, Whew, I, I really have to wonder, are they human? So uh, Dave Smith and Laura Loomer had this debate. That I have to say it was very constructive. Um, and I encourage all of you to look at this conversation as well. And by the way, folks, when we do play these videos or read articles, I encourage all of you to see all perspectives and points of view so that you can have a well-rounded opinion so that that way you are more informed. And that's how we can push forward to maybe have more civil conversations and dialogue, debate, peace, and so much more. So let's pull up this video here in regards to where David Smith says, let's make a real effort to put ourselves in their shoes and go. What will we do in that situation? So let's go ahead and pull it up here. Again, shout out to Zero Hedge for hosting this debate between these two individuals. So let's play it for all you lovely people. You push a blank check. Yeah. Do whatever you want to do. Drop bombs on whoever the hell you want to drop bombs on. Because we are pissed off because we got hit and someone else has to suffer for this. Or was it really the people who did it? Is it just innocent people who are and dying? Now we're suffering. We're the terrorists. Okay, we are fine. the terrorists in our the country. The Muslim world has had a thousand 9-11s. And if you sit here and go, look, just imagine, try to imagine, be really genuine here, okay? Because we're going to see it. We're so much better than the Islamic world. And, and you know what? I generally do think we are. But even us, who's so much better than them, imagine, not one 9-11, but a thousand 9-11s happened here. What would that look like? And then let's say after a thousand 9-11s happened here, let's say whoever, Iran did it. And then Iran invades and they overthrow our government and they prop up their own government. And now they rule us. What do you think the, like, the toughest right wing militia members in America would be doing? They'd be throwing Molotov cocktails through their government building. They'd be running up suicide bombing themselves. And I bet they'd yell something about Jesus before they did it too. Because they'd probably start clinging to their religion. So I'm just saying that like if... And I've brought this up at numerous events that I've attended in the past. How would you feel if you were in that other person's shoes? Especially when it came down to, you know, conflicts in the Middle East. Be it at a conservative barbecue or at a liberal barbecue. And especially with so much that's been happening, I think it's very hard for Americans to really put themselves in that mindset. Because imagine if somebody did that. Really, seriously. And let's let's look at ourselves as a country. I'm going to call out all the states right now, but if I, if I miss over some of them, hey, Okay, Texas, Georgia, New York, Illinois, California, North and South Carolina, North and South Dakota, Florida. I'm just going to name those states in particular. You know what? Hey, why not? Louisiana, Alabama, Kentucky, Philly, Philadelphia. These are just a handful of states, but I know all states are going to have the same answer. Imagine if somebody... Uh, did uh, what we did to Central and South America or coups in Iran or in the Middle East. Imagine if somebody did that to us, you know, all that stuff. Without a shadow of a doubt, I know people in those communities, those states that I mentioned, are going to get upset. You're going to get angry. You're going to be like, how dare you do this to me? And if it's generational for decades, 75, 100 years, 
Nobody can look me in the eye and say they wouldn't do everything they can to resist or be angry or furious at said occupier or foreign power interfering in their own country or in their own neighborhood. We have to put ourselves in the other person's shoes. And I know for a fact, I know for a fact people would be emotionally angry and want justice. And my evidence for this is because the long, sad history of humanity. We've been doing this to each other for years. And I think it's long overdue that we stop it before we reach the point of no return. And some big brain moron sees a shiny red button that says nuke and decides to press it. We're unwilling in this, in this debate, in this divide, to try, make a real effort to put ourselves in their shoes and go, what would we do in that situation? My apologies. I called Philadelphia. I meant Pennsylvania, the state. I just caught myself doing that. That's why I love the live stream audience. <laughs> but yes, there you go. Pennsylvania. But Philadelphia, hey, I love you. I love you guys and gals there in Philly. Situation. If you imagine, listen, this is 1948 is not that long ago. But I also want to pull up another video here as well. To ask them. So if you so let me just respond to a couple things you said here because this is I think really important and gets to the crux of the matter. So number one, I'd say okay, if you fled, some of them were forced out, some of them fled. We know all this from the historical record. Um, regardless, if some people start shooting outside my house and I take my family and run, I don't think that means that they own my house now. But you right, know, but who like, was shooting? Hold on. Well, Israelis in many cases. Oh, um, but, but that's but in a big some part, cases, right? In many okay, cases, though, in many cases, I'm not saying all because I'm not is, being my, black and white here. Is, okay, is but let me make my point. Aggression. This is the this bigger. Is, this is, this is the, the bigger point. Back to, Here's Islamic the bigger aggression. point because I think this is the height of the the whole debate here. What you said before is you go look. Yeah, they won the war and they get to write the history books and they get to control the land. That's the way of the world, right? That that was literally what you just said. That is the way of the world. Okay, fine, fine, but then own that. If you're just saying might makes right, and that's, okay, fine. But then, except this, you don't get to look at these Islamists and say you're a bunch of barbarians because all you're saying is might makes right. And you know what their response to that is? October 7th. That's the response. Not, oh, you I'm say might saying, makes right? Okay, well then guess what? Right. We're going to use all the might we have. It's I'm exactly what you're saying. But you, I, I just asked if that's but, what you were saying and you said but, yes. But here He's got a point. Dave Smith is correct. Look. When the victors write the history, and they do, the victors always write the history books. You know, they're they're the ones who recount the glorious battles and victories, of course. Well, of course, eventually there's going to be resentment, and people are, especially those who have suffered injustice, are going to be angry. And if you say might is right, well, then said group is also going to use that same method and ideology. We've been doing this to each other for years upon years. We have to be better. We have to be better. So if you're going to say that. We think about ourselves here, right? In terms of the British colonizers. Okay. Now, I do want to pull up another video here. And this is from the uh, Zero Hedge website. I encourage all of you to check this out. But let's just pull up this video here. That what Laura just said, um, opening with this kind of you know binary of you either support what Hamas did or you're enabling it is exactly the problem. And it's been the problem in the United States of America for particularly the last 20 years, but probably much longer than that. This kind of George W. Bush, you're either with us or against us. You either support the war in Iraq or you're Osama bin Laden. Those are your two options. Mm -hmm. I'm a strict non-interventionist. I also recognize that the situation between Israel and Palestine is enormously complex with many egregious crimes on both sides. And the reason why there's probably some division amongst Jewish people, or there's some division amongst even conservatives and libertarians, is because what's currently happening right now in Gaza is horrific. And it's completely inexcusable. And innocent babies are dying by the thousands. And that's what most people are rejecting. Now, the idea, I have not, I have, look, the left wing is pretty goofy. And there's some goofy takes that you'll hear out of them. I have not heard any conservative or any libertarian in any. Now, hold on. Look, OK, <laughs> there's the left wing and let's not forget the right wing. OK, there is a lot of goofy takes on both sides. All right. Not, not one side smarter than the other. And I see my fair share of snowflakes on both sides. Way justifying what Hamas did. So let me start off because I know that question will be asked of me already. 
I don't support Hamas. Who do you think I am? Benjamin Netanyahu? I would never support. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, folks. That's that that that's a thing. In case in case in, in case you realize that. He's, and right there, you know what I call that? And I wish I could play the, the, the video curses upon copyright strike, but I call that like I caught your knife and I'm gonna throw it right back at you. What uh comedian Dave Smith did there was almost akin to what you saw in Big Trouble Little China. We say low pan throwing that knife, and then guy catches it. Throws it right back at him. That's 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 perfect. It's perfect right there. Libertarian in any way justifying what Hamas did. So let me start off because I know that question will be asked of me already. I don't support Hamas. Who do you think I am? Benjamin Netanyahu? I bet he wrote that joke down. He's like, wait a minute. That'd be great to use. And if he did, awesome. If he came off that uh, off the fly, that's even better. No matter what. That's that's awesome. You know, hey, I'm going to be petty here one more time. One more time for all you lovely, beautiful people. Third time. And there's some goofy takes that you'll hear out of them. I have not heard any conservative or any libertarian in any way justifying what Hamas did. So let me start off because I know that question will be asked of me already. I don't support Hamas. Who do you think I am? Benjamin Netanyahu? I would never support Hamas as he did actively for years as an intentional strategy to divide the Palestinian movement. That's what Benjamin Netanyahu did. Well, he's not wrong. He's definitely not wrong in his analysis. He's not wrong in calling out the fact that, yes, we there is a, a serious issue, a serious issue um, in regards to how Netanyahu's administration played a role in supporting Hamas, but also uh, a lot of the domestic issues impacting impacting uh israel and look what, what what better way to cover up his own political scandals uh than by having a war to distract people we got a few more highlights that i just want to pull up here before i give my analysis but one other thing here too we have to look at both sides this is something here that i've i've learned over time on hard lens media when covering current events giving commentary giving analysis or being on the ground you have to look at the bigger picture okay it's not black and white. There are shades of gray. And the world is harsh and disturbing. And I've seen hypocrites on both sides. I've seen conservatives act far more passionate and humanely than liberals or progressives. And I've seen progressives and liberals act compassionate too. I've seen both sides act hypocritical and act warlike. I've seen many of them act like Puritans. So... You have to look at the bigger picture. You have to look at both sides, but you also have to look at reason and accountability. And this conflict that's happening between Israel and Palestine, it is exposing so much about why our system doesn't work, both here and overseas. And overall, the bigger question of why does history keep on repeating itself? How many times are we going to keep on witnessing the West Bank or Gaza being destroyed? How many times are we going to witness another terrorist event? How many times are we witness another war happening somewhere around the world? More political instability, conflict. I mean, this is this is the problem right now in this modern day and age where we have ongoing forever wars. And all of those conflicts do. There isn't a winner. It's just laying the foundation for the next war to come 10 years down the road or sooner. We all live on the same goddamn planet. We all have the same hopes and dreams and fears. I want to pull up another video here. Again, these are just some of the highlights. This was a two-hour debate, and I am going to post this link in the live stream chat, and I will also be posting it here when I clip this video as well. So let's go ahead and pull it up here so that all of you can see firsthand and get a, get a bigger picture as well. Say that radical Islam, or as you call it, just Islam, is this problem. Then how do you feel about the fact for the last, let's say, 60 years, the United States of America and Israel has explicitly funded for stated strategic reasons, the worst elements of radical Islam, Hamas, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Wahhabism, and they've said they're doing it for a reason, 
to undermine their competing you know, interests in the Muslim world. How do you feel about that? Can you criticize Israel at all? Were they wrong to support Hamas? I can criticize Israel. But Were they wrong is, to support this Hamas? Is, this is hey, this is, this, this, is, this is a question that needs to be asked because the Israeli government, Benjamin Netanyahu's government, did this. But look, <laughs> during the Cold War era, when Ronnie Boy Reagan was around, there was this conflict happening in Afghanistan, I know. Surprise, surprise. And the Soviets were there. It was. It could be argued that that was their Vietnam. And uh, the United States helped out a guy named Osama bin Laden. Yeah. We helped him. We gave him money. We've created a lot of Frankensteins out there. Our government. And yes, I am including us in here because we, the people, unbeknownst to us, made a choice to give our silent, obedient consent. And we have to speak out. Because all these monsters that we've created, all this destruction that our government did, we have to rectify it. I just want to play that part again just one more time. This is 60 years. The United States of America and Israel has explicitly funded for stated strategic reasons the worst elements of radical Islam. Hamas, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Wahhabism. And they've said they're doing it for a reason, to undermine their competing you know, interests in the Muslim world. How do you feel about that? Can you criticize Israel at all? Were they wrong to support Hamas? I can criticize Israel. But Were they wrong a, to support this Hamas? Is, this is an irrelevant question because you Islam won't answer it. You won't Islam, say it's I, wrong I, to support I, Hamas. Is it wrong have, if Iran supports I have Hamas? I obviously said that it is wrong to support Hamas, but so this, it was but, wrong when Israel question, did that. The, the question doesn't really make any sense because when you think about it, it not make any you're saying sense that the United States, the the United States government is propping up Islam. I'm not denying the. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I, we, you know, we, we've seen debates like this. Um, we've seen debates like this take place. And yes, one side says something, the other side says the other. But what comes after? What is the overall real solution to do here? You know, I have my criticisms of protests and activism. If it's done effectively and efficiently, it, it it can make an impact. Truly, it can. And it requires people across the political spectrum to call out their politicians, to call out our lawmakers, to call out the individuals who are making the decision to be indifferent to the bombings in Gaza. It requires the people to execute their power. Now, I want to pull up one other um, video here just so that we can hear uh, just another side of the perspective because, yes, it is entertaining to watch people fight or see Twitter beef. Hey, we're, we're all part of it, right? We see it. But it's, this is a debate, but hopefully it can lead to a bigger question and more people to ask, why aren't we calling for a ceasefire yet? Enough is enough. The bombings, as they continue, will cause more destruction further on down the road because it will echo into the future. Let's play this video. And okay. all societies have a responsibility to challenge or question. overthrow governments get, if their governments that, are that not serving such the a people? Great, that is such a great question. So let me just say this, okay? The United States of America in the last 20 years, okay, between the war in Afghanistan the war in Iraq, which I think we can all probably agree were like just ridiculous catastrophes that we never should have fought. Let's also add in there the war uh, Obama's, which I'm sure you'll agree with me about, Obama overthrowing Gaddafi in Libya and leading to the migrant crisis into Europe was an absolute disaster. Let's also throw in yeah. there the attempt, right. So and let's bringing all, in all yes, the okay. refugees okay. to yes. attack yes. Americans. Hold yes. on, let me just finish my point. Let's also add in there the attempted regime change war in Syria, which- By the way, again, we went from two wars to seven under Barack Obama. How'd that happen? The guy won a Nobel Peace Prize. What's the punchline? What's the joke? I'm, I'm, I'm really waiting to hear the answer to that. 
which we started that led to 500,000 people dying. Let's also throw in there the war in Yemen, which we backed the Saudis fighting. Don't or forget some, the Arab Spring. Some, hold on. Something <laughs> else like 500,000 somewhere in that ballpark also died. When you add up all of the numbers, you're talking about millions and millions of dead innocent people. What responsibility do you have? What responsibility do I have? What responsibility do you have? Are we fair targets now to be murdered because we haven't overthrown the status quo, as you just said? Why is it that we as Americans get to hold these standards against other nations, which we would never dream of imposing on ourselves? What, what are, you know, the question is always asked, what's Israel supposed to do? Don't they have a right to defend themselves? Do all of these countries that we've slaughtered innocent people in, do they have a right to defend themselves? Do they have a right to come over here and kill innocent civilians? I would say no. They don't have a right to come kill innocent civilians. You have political grievances with the government class, but it does not follow as Osama bin Laden or Bill Clinton or Barack Obama or George W. Bush would argue that it then follows that we can in inflict this collective punishment against people. Man's inhumanity to man. The back and forth need for revenge, for justice. We've seen this cycle repeat itself over and over again. And unfortunately, our government, as comedian Dave Smith has said, has done this to other countries, Iran, Syria, Iraq, everywhere across the world. And we have to take accountability for the actions of what these lawmakers and their special interests have done in our name. That's right. They did this. And we gave our silent, obedient consent. And I it's it's important that we just don't get angry at ourselves. We 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 look at this crisis and we have to say enough. Maybe there can be peace in our time, but we have to take a step forward and saying I will not hurt my brother. For what? Oil, gas, Resources, it's, apparently every single war we all notice has been fought over resources, land, territory, power. I'm just going to make a controversial statement here, but I don't know. Maybe someday, not today and not in your grand, great-grandchildren's lifetime, but, but maybe in their great-grandchildren's lifetime. Maybe, maybe people can come together if we're still around. And we could put our brains together and actually, I don't know, make a sustainable world. I, it's, it's a little bit controversial what I'm saying here. Peace in our time, working together. But it is achievable. There is a way for it to happen. We don't have to be ruled by these sociopathic oligarchs who have us playing these back and forth games of hating my neighbor. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Internationally, we have to be better. If we're going to be the better ones, if we're going to say you're the Islamists, but we're the civilized people, if we're going to represent the best tradition of Western civilization, then the point would be that we don't believe in any of that. We don't believe that you can target innocent men, women, and children. That's what separates us from the savages. Israel is not so targeting to, innocent women and children. Though. They absolutely intent, are. Intent matters. Well, there are hospitals that are being bombed. Uh, there are... Um, refugee centers that are being bombed. So what can we take away from this? Obviously, this was a, like all debates, it gets a lot of views. Same thing with Pierce Morgan and Bassem Youssef or anybody else. I mean, we, we see these debates. We absorb the information, the words, the talking points that are being said, and we continue on our day. But actions do matter. Our actions, what we can collectively do as people. And we have an arduous task before us on what we can do to maybe make a better future in order to achieve the impossible, something that we have not seen, and that is peace. What a sight it would be if we can actually achieve that monumental task. When we look at the fact of might is right, remember that the other side will also use that same mindset too so that they can be proven right. The whole idea of two wrongs make a right. It doesn't. We have to be better. In time, maybe we can. Just not today.